Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Daniel Rosal here again. I am going to be doing a video on uh, backup options for YouTube creators. It's not gonna be like the most exciting video, A, because of the topic, B, because of the way I'm presenting it. It's gonna just be me drawing out some diagrams. But I've been interested in backup and data protection for a number of years. And I think that those who get backup understand why backup's necessary. It's not the sexiest thing to be thinking about, but it is super important. If you've ever lost your data uh, because you didn't have a backup, you know how painful that is. And sometimes data loss is uh, irretrievable or irreparable. So it's really something that if you're creating a lot of great videos on YouTube and you wanna make sure that um, there's some protection in place that you know if you got locked out of your account uh, through whatever reason or YouTube deletes a video because they change their uh, their, they, they change their content policies or you integrate your YouTube account with some rogue app that gets hit by malware and it like you know destroys all your deletes all your YouTube videos all these are unlikely scenarios but they're not impossible scenarios so that's the reason and besides YouTube is just a platform it's a third party owned platform it's not um, there in order to like guarantee that's not your data is your responsibility. So just putting it up on YouTube and saying, oh, it's good, it's on YouTube, YouTube are hosting it, it's gonna be fine forever, is not an advisable approach. So you should take your take control over your own data. So I'm gonna show you guys in this video like a few different backup options you can use, ranging from a really something really simple to something a little bit more complicated but more robust. And I'm just gonna be plotting them out. This diagramming software, by the way, is called draw.io. So you're a creator, you're a video creator, and it just this, by the way, could be applied equally to podcasts or even writing. It just, the type of data is kind of irrelevant uh, when you're talking about backup. It's just video data is heavier than podcasts typically, and uh, audio is almost always heavier than writing, if like writing is your thing. So you could substitute YouTube for WordPress and or for wherever you host your podcast, etc. But I'm just gonna focus, I'm just gonna use YouTube as the kind of example for this. So when you're creating video to YouTube, there's a couple of reasons besides the one that I've outlined why YouTube shouldn't really be considered a backup in itself, even though YouTube is in the cloud and people think the cloud is like gonna be here forever and it's indestructible, which is not necessarily the case. It is the case that the cloud is very redundant for data storage, which means that um, YouTube being hosted on Google has crazy server infrastructure that makes sure that when you put up a video, it doesn't just vanish. They have everything. It's not quite backup, it's more redundancy that there is uh, servers, the data scattered in servers around the world. So you don't, we don't have to worry about it not being available, but it's going to be a D, you're, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna be able to extract from YouTube the original quality of your video. So when you upload to YouTube, the first thing YouTube does with the video is it compresses it. And it's got a proprietary, really, really good proprietary compression algorithm that uh, for, that makes the video lighter so that it can stream more easily, right? So there's two ways to get your videos out of YouTube. One of those is using download video, that button in your YouTube studio. And the other one is using Google Takeout, which people commonly think of as a backup software and it's not a backup software. It's a, I guess you could call it a data export software. Its use case is not intended for backup. So whether you use Google Takeout to get your YouTube data or you just do it manually, you're not gonna be getting your original video back. So you don't even have that when you're just like, let's say you upload a file to YouTube and delete your local file. That's a really bad idea because now you don't have any copy of your original video, the master track, right? So that's why, so that's certainly not recommended. But what you can do in a lightweight approach is to just keep one on-site backup. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna try to be consistent here. I'm gonna use yellow for backups and green for you as a creator at the epicenter of this world. So you can do an on-site backup and this is what a lot of people will do. Now in terms of options for on-site backup, so that's keeping a copy. So you finish with your video and then you, see, you upload it to YouTube and then you say, I'm not gonna delete this file, I'm going to back up this file. So the first place, on-site backup, it's called on-site because it means um, it's on your premises, whether that's your house or like your office, it doesn't really matter. You're not storing this particular backup somewhere like the cloud, which is really basically just means someone else's computer. 
So regard, regarding on-site backup for video, there's really two options. There's one common option and there's one more obscure option, but because I'm into it, I'm going to uh, put it out there. So one is gonna be called, I'm gonna call this live backup. And live backup, so this is an either or arrow flow here, okay? You don't need to do both. There's no real reason I can think of you need to do two on-site backups. The idea of backup is always to minimize risk, right? So you, you could take six on-site backups if you have storage, but that wouldn't really be smart. Um, network attached storage or an NAS or a server. And really an NAS is just a type of server. It's a data specific server. So that's basically something that you plug in. If you don't know what an NAS is, you plug it into your uh, power and it has, um, it's a live, now I'm using the word live to mean that it's on the network. It it's requires electricity to run and it uses something called RAID, random um, independent array of disks. Um, and basically RAID has really good redundancy. So once you have your files on an NAS, you it's pretty crazy. One of those hard drives in your NAS can fail. And the idea of RAID is that the data will survive because it's got this crazy tech for like putting it, uh, splitting the file over different different hard drives. Um, the problem really I see with an NAS for storage is if we're looking for a backup approach that's going to scale, right? If you're just doing a few videos, fine. If you're starting to, if you're starting to create like gigabytes or terabytes or even petabytes of video data, um, you're gonna run out of NAS storage pretty quickly. Now you can, typically NASs have a number of bays. That's a number of hard drives that can be like stuck into the NAS. And you could try to like, you know, get bigger, swap out smaller hard drives as bigger ones, but at some point you're probably gonna have to buy a whole nother NAS, a whole new machine and start from scratch. Versus doing something like cold backup, which basically means um, it's a form of onsite backup where you are going to be, I'm just gonna try to get an arrow out of this guy here. You're going to be backing up your data. It's going to be onsite, but it's going to be on a storage medium that is not a computer. So. The problem here is something called bit rod or data rod. And that's that data, unlike if you write something on paper um, and you, you know, the paper survives. By the way, there is a crazy class of paper called archival paper that's intended to last a long time. But if you just write stuff on paper, the, you know, the writing is pretty good. When we're talking about storing computer files, we're effectively talking about storing billions of ones and zeros in the perfect order for the file to be readable. It's actually a lot more complicated. And when you store data cold, there's a tendency for that data to uh, degrade. So whether we're talking about hard drives, which demagnetize over time, or DVDs, which tend to have a layer that melts away, data rot's a problem. So I'm gonna just put that in like parentheses here, data rot. So that's the advantage of an NAS is because it's a live computer system, you're gonna be protected to a large extent against data rot. Um, for cold storage for archival, the typical medium has been what's called LTO or tape. A lot of people outside of, who don't have anything to do with enterprise tech, don't even know that tape is still a thing that exists. It's based, and you just Google LTO tape in Google images and you can see exactly what it looks like. It is actually a tape, like remember the way there used to be cassette tapes and it's used for data storage. Now LTO is um, resistant to uh, data rot. It's sorry, it's not not completely resistant. It's just less, there's less of a problem versus uh, hard drives, which are really not intended for long-term archival storage. And the second option you're gonna have here is what's called the M-Disk. This is a totally obscure medium and it's not huge capacity but I just did an interview with the MDisk guy and it's really fascinating tech. It's actually a form of storage media intended specifically for long-term long cold archival storage, right? So you have basically, in terms of your on-site, this would be the more traditional option to build yourself an LTO library. The problem with this approach is that LTO tapes are super cheap. LTO drives are really expensive because the typical buyer here is a big enterprise. So as a small YouTuber or as a small creator, it's definitely more economical to either go down the NAS route or even go down the MDisk route. The MDisks just, they, they're not that expensive. You get a special Blu-ray burner for like $100 on Amazon. It's actually a pretty affordable way 
of doing archival versus LTO. So this to me would be one backup approach. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Your videos are up on YouTube, but you're hedging your bets by keeping everything you create in archival storage, whether that's a live backup on in your premises or a cold backup. Now, there's one more thing you can do to really, really uh, bulletproof your, uh, your, your, your video backup approach, and that's keeping an offsite backup. Now, the reason off, offsite backup exists is basically because if you think about it, you have all your videos on YouTube. We've already established that it's not gonna get you your master copy. This is going to be preserving your master copy, but what happens, God forbid, if your house burns down? Whether you have it on NAS or whether you have it on LTO or whether you have it on MDisk is not gonna help matters. Your backups are destroyed and now we have no original copy of our data. Um, or I don't know, you have a party and someone throws your NES in the swimming pool and you're like, oh, there goes all my YouTube data. So these are not, these are not very likely possibilities. But when we're talking about backup, we are in the business of talking about protecting against obscure things that can go wrong because as a guy called Murphy said, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. So offsite backup means basically um, creating a backup copy in a second physical location. Now the common places for that would be, you can do, I'm gonna call it like manual offsite, manual offsite, and I'm gonna do the cloud, right? So manual offsite means because backup is, um, I'm gonna say here, like, you know, you wanna probably store it in some kind of backup you don't want to put it in Google Drive because it's not designed for this. You want to put it in, in some kind of cloud storage that's specifically intended for backup like AWS or uh, Backblaze B2. Um, so where were we? Oh yeah, the offsite backup. So what I mean by manual offsite is because the whole principle of an offsite backup is just backing up your data to some other location. If, you're, if you live in New York and your friend lives in Chicago, you could post, every time you create an mdisk, a new mdisk, you could literally post them, right? My text here, I'm gonna say, post to your friend, okay? You could literally send a disk in the post every time you burn one to your friend, and you could say to your friend, I'm gonna pay you, uh, you know, 50 bucks a year, that's a bit cheap, uh, $300 a year to keep your collection, to keep my collection of mdisks in your attic and that's technically an off-site backup right there's no commercial entity involved here um i am there are companies that do this professionally uh, or you can try to be creative now the other one is the cloud and the cloud is kind of more more classic um the cloud would be something again like really it's again the cloud is the cloud is anyone else's computer but uh when we're talking about it in this context of backup we're probably looking for uh, object storage. So that tends to be specific cloud services like AWS or Backblaze B2, which is uh, a cheap competitor. So that's basically, um, and then now once you've, if you're doing, let's say your options are, I'm gonna highlight these in green. I'm gonna go for MDisk. I'm gonna color this green. Whoops, I'm gonna color my MDisk uh, backup green here, green. And I'm gonna do AWS. I'm gonna cover color this green as well. Now, this is a three to one compliant backup approach, right? The data that is publicly available is there on YouTube, but you're not risking the destruction of your original data because you have it in an on-site backup location. You have one copy here in your, in your attic. And just in case something happens to your on-site, you periodically duplicate that off-site. And if you have an NES, by the way, uh, they commonly have the Synology NESs have these great programs if I can just do one last arrow here, it's gonna be a bit, I don't think the software is liking this crazy arrow I'm trying to do between NAS and uh, Backblaze is probably, I'm sure there's a way to do it I'm missing. That do, there we go, right? So you can also, there's a software on NASs uh, called Cloud Sync, and that'll allow you to sync your NAS directly with the cloud. The advantage of post your friend backup is it doesn't require internet, this is, over the internet and the reason I personally can't do this and many other people can't do this is because uh, when we're talking about moving video, we're talking about high gigabyte data and you need, a, you need a really good connection to get up to the cloud. I imagine in very soon in coming years, 
uh, that is not going to be a problem because bandwidth will get better worldwide. Now you can do two offsite backups just as you can do two offsite backups. The reason I wouldn't recommend this is the disadvantage of offsite is that you're committing your data to a third party. You need to keep paying it for them to store your data. Um, so doing that twice wouldn't really bring any benefits over doing it just once. So that's why traditionally backup approaches have been split, to the best of my knowledge, between one on-site and one off-site because one copy is under your management and one copy is under somebody else's management. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. This is kind of the full overview of uh, what you can do with your YouTube data. And I hope this has been helpful for someone. Uh, thank you guys for watching.